Hi everyone, today's video is a quick reminder on those eight super important tips to achieve healthier, younger looking skin. If you are really struggling with your skin at the moment or you're spending a lot of money on your skin and not seeing any benefits, this is definitely going to be the video for you because I do a lot of videos on my channel testing out lots of devices that can be rather pricey. Every single one of these eight tips are achievable on any budget nothing pricey. You definitely don't need to buy anything expensive. In fact, most of these tips, you don't have to buy anything at all. It's just a simple change in lifestyle. So let's get straight on with it. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new content on YouTube every single week. I would love it. If at some point in this video, you're finding it helpful, please consider coming and joining the Pampered Wolf Pack by clicking on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. So most of these tips are self-explanatory, but sometimes I feel like we need to hear it again just to refresh our memories, to then go back to the checklist and say, yep, doing that, doing that, doing that, could do better on that, and just tweak a few things down the line because we all know what we should be doing, whether we're doing it or not, is another story altogether. So the first thing I want to mention is Hydrate, 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 hydrate. It is super important that we drink enough liquid throughout the day to sustain our bodies, to allow our bodies to do all of the jobs that they need to do every single millisecond, second, minute, hour of the day to keep our bodies healthy, to keep that heart pumping, our lungs breathing, our kidneys, our liver, our brain functioning in a healthy way. And as soon as we start to become dehydrated, those organs can't do their jobs to the best of their abilities. Things become harder and our health takes a knock and that includes our skin. So if you think of all your organs lined up on a conveyor belt and you have a huge jug of water in your hand, the jug of water represents all of the liquid that you drink throughout the day. We're going to pass that liquid onto your internal organs. So last on that conveyor belt is your skin. Generally, not all the time, but usually it is because your skin takes the most hammer throughout the day. So it needs a lot of hydration because a lot of hydration evaporates from the skin quite a lot throughout the day. So you start off with maybe your brain, lungs, kidneys. By the time you get to your skin, the jug is pretty much empty. So it's really, really important that we keep on topping up that jug throughout the day so that our skin gets enough hydration and we're not just relying on those topical treatments like hyaluronic acid, like glycerin, which we know can be problematic for a lot of people. Tip two, and just like tip one, we do need to appreciate that not everything regarding our skin's health and the way that our skin looks can be corrected by a topical treatment, a lotion, a potion, the next best thing that's arrived on the market that costs £5,000. Not everything can be corrected by those without concentrating on what we're putting inside our bodies. We do need to have a healthy diet that is full of colourful ingredients because those colourful fruits and vegetables contain a lot of antioxidants and antioxidants are really key to having good skin health. Now those antioxidants that we consume on a daily basis will help prevent free radical damage or oxidative stress, which in turn will help prevent DNA damage further on down the line, which we do not want. So it is really important that we get enough of those really colourful fruits and vegetables in our diet to give our skin the help that it needs to fend off those pollutants and those nasty aggressors in the air. Now, I'm not a dietitian, so I'm not gonna preach to you about what you should and shouldn't be eating. That is up to you. We're all adults here. We can all make our own minds up. My job is to give you the facts. So these are the fruits and vegetables and also a couple of others as well. If you're not a big fan of fruit and vegetables, there is a way of getting antioxidants within your diet without having to go down that route. Although it's probably healthier to go down that route, but again, not going to preach to you all. These are the fruits, vegetables and other foods that are rich in antioxidants. So these are just a selection, but we've got apricots, mangoes, passion fruit, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, black currants, red pepper, carrots, tomatoes, kale, red cabbage, beets, beans as well, and spinach. And if you're not a huge fan of fruit and vegetables, then pecans and dark chocolate are also extremely rich in antioxidants. 
So while we're talking about consuming antioxidants, let's talk about topical antioxidants for the skin. I think it's really important that you apply a topical antioxidant in the morning and also in the evening to really help out your skin to fend off that skin damage. Because topical antioxidants won't just help fight against free radical damage, they'll also help you get smoother skin, they'll also help firm your skin, they'll promote brighter skin, as well. They'll fight wrinkles and some antioxidants can also be incredibly soothing as well. Now, like I said, I do recommend that you use an antioxidant both in the morning and in the evening. I will link some of my favorite antioxidant products in the description box for you if you want to check that out. But most people use a vitamin C in the morning and a vitamin A or a retinol, retinal, tretinoin product in the evening. If you don't get on with either of those products for any reason though, there are ways of you getting antioxidants into your skincare without using vitamin C or vitamin A. Here are just a few. Tip four. I did say I wasn't going to preach to everybody. I stand by that. This is just a fact. Sugar is killing your skin. Sugar is the devil when skin is concerned. If you have a high sugar diet and you're wanting your skin to be firm, to be bright, to be clear, to be bouncy and plump and just youthful, you are doing your skin a disservice. You may have been able to get away with it in your younger years and you may be getting away with it really well now and not noticing the difference, but sugar is terrible for the skin. It increases inflammation, which over time can create sagging. It decreases collagen production. It is just awful. So if you are spending a lot of money on skincare and you're still eating a lot of sugar, it's a little bit like trying to get healthier and lose weight, going out for a jog every day, which is absolutely amazing and really increasing your health and losing that weight and just becoming healthier in general and then getting back from your run and eating 50 cheeseburgers. One cheeseburger? Okay. Two? Very hungry today. 50? Not so much. It's counterintuitive, it just, the balance is off. So if you are wanting clear, healthy skin, try eating less sugar or zero. That would be better. But you know, <laughs> I like a piece of cake every now and again, so that's just not happening. <laughs> Tip five, if you're wanting healthy skin and you smoke, you're probably going to want to think about stopping because you all know smoking's bad for your health anyway. I'm not going to wax on about that, but smoking is terrible for your skin. It's really, really bad. So if you're wanting really clear, healthy, bouncy, youthful skin, you're going to want to think about stopping. I had somebody contact me the other day. I'd spoken about a product on my channel and I thought it was the best thing ever. Obviously everybody's gonna get differing results, but this person contacted me and said they'd been using it for six months and had no benefit from it whatsoever. And they were really quite cross about it. So, you know, I don't want anybody being upset. We went into their background. And my last question to them was, do you smoke? The answer was yes all bets are off. If you smoke, doesn't matter what skincare you're using, the damage that you're doing to your skin outweighs the benefit of the skincare that you're applying to your skin. End of. Not only are you creating a lot of free radical damage on the face when you're a smoker, I mean, you can usually see a line up the face where the texture is really off because you've created a lot of oxidative stress and your skin isn't smooth anymore. There's just a lot of texture. Also, you get a lot of lip lines, not only from the repetitive movements from putting a cigarette in and out of your mouth, but also from, again, that oxidative stress on the skin. Also, your elevenses will probably be a little bit deeper. Your forehead lines, especially in that central portion, will be a lot deeper. Your crow's feet, anything, all your skin damage will be a lot more severe with a smoker. Tip six, stop over applying skincare to your skin. And I'm not talking about slathering moisturizer on and applying too much. I'm talking about the amount of products, the number of products that you have in your morning skincare routine and in your evening skincare routine as well. Now I test out a lot of products on my channel and therefore I talk about a lot of products on my channel. That doesn't mean that I have all of those products in my morning and my evening skincare routine. I tweak out 
what I want and what I want to achieve with my skin, but I very rarely have more than two actives in my morning skincare routine and two actives in my evening skincare routine because it's just too much for me. Now, your skin may be able to cope with more than mine, but if you are getting the slight bit of irritation, inflammation, anything like that, if your skin is trying to tell you that it is not happy, you need to pause, take a step back, have a look at what you're using, just completely clear the decks and simplify everything. And even if you're only using one active in a morning and one active in an evening, your skin will thank you. Tip seven, don't skip sleeping. This is something that I'm really struggling with at the moment. I self-sabotage my sleep. I know I'm doing it and I really struggle to correct that mistake. So I like to have a little bit of time in the evening when my kids go to bed. And sometimes my kids go to bed really late, which means I don't go to bed until really, really late. And then I'll look at my phone, I'll sit on my phone for a little while, look at the clock and it's half past one in the morning and I've gotta be up at six the next day to get the kids up for school. That is not enough sleep for me. Now, if you are one of those people that says, I don't need sleep, three to four hours a night and I am a-okay. You may think that. Three to four hours a night is not enough for your skin to regenerate and heal and repair. It's just not. You are not doing your skin any favors if you're skipping that sleep time. So a lack of sleep raises your cortisol levels, which makes you rather irritable and not a very pleasant person to live around, but also it really damages the skin because an increase in those cortisol levels increases inflammation and irritation in the skin, also breaks down the collagen, it breaks down the proteins in the skin that make everything smooth and supple and soft so you get a lot more texture and it can also decrease collagen production as well so if you need any other excuse to put a pair of fluffy socks on curl up in bed with a good book and just turn the light out an hour earlier there you go and finally, tip eight, and you all knew this was coming because you know I'm a huge advocate for SPF and I never shut up about it, just in case anybody hasn't heard me before. Everybody should be wearing an SPF of at least 30 or above on a daily basis if you're sat near a window, if you're going outside, and you need to reapply it every two hours if you're continuously out in the sunshine. Super, super important. Your skin will definitely thank you. It's really easy to overlook SPF because you don't see the damage that the sun is doing to your skin immediately. It comes over time. So, you know, we don't see it coming. Just all of a sudden we look in the mirror and we've got loads of pigmentation, sun damage and sagging skin. How did that get there? Well, that's how it got there. It's the sun rays. It's just all the nasties that go with it. If you're one of those people that doesn't wear SPF on a daily basis, maybe you use it when you go on a family holiday to Spain or Portugal or somewhere beautiful. I'm very jealous if that is you, but you don't wear it in the autumn and winter. Please start thinking of the sun's rays and those rays do get through clouds. So even when it's cloudy in autumn and winter, you are still getting sun damage. Please start thinking of those sun's rays the same way that you think of the rain, because you wouldn't never think about going out in the rain without protecting yourself from getting wet. You put a coat on, you put your hood up, you put an umbrella up, and the water really isn't doing your skin any damage. Whereas the sun's rays, there's a lot of damage happening there. So protect yourself from the sun the same way you protect yourself from the rain. So that's it for this video. I really hope you found it helpful. I know all those eight tips are pretty self-explanatory, but like I said at the beginning of this video, sometimes we just need a little reminder. I know I do because sometimes you just have to sit down and just think, yeah, I could do better at that. And a lot of these, I have to hold my hand up. I could do better and I will try. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have found it helpful, I've linked another couple of videos that I think you may also enjoy over here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.